thing you need to do is take your impression, gently rinse it with some water to get out all of the disinfectant. This is very important. Then shake off gently. And then if you are in the lab, then you can take it to the bench and blow it dry or semi-dry with a gentle stream of water. You do need to remove all excess um, puddles of water from the impression. Okay. Now we're ready to pour. So what we are going to do first is measure out the plaster and the water. So what we are going to do is we are going to use 250 grams of plaster and we are going to use approximately 120 cc's of cold water. I've got the water measured out. I'm going to measure out the plaster. The plaster is going to go in the smaller bowls. You're going to set your bowl on the scale and then you're going to take your zero and adjust it so that it is in line with the red indicator. Now I'm going to measure out again 250 grams of powder. Now when you're doing this, be sure to put your mask on. Ideally you should have a dust mask for gypsum. Fill up your bowl until you get to 250. You have over, just take some out. There. Make sure that you close up the plaster bag so that moisture won't get in. Okay, now you're going to grab your plaster spatula and you are going to put your water in the larger of the two bowls. We are going to put our powder into our water and carefully mix until all the powder is wetted and you should end up with a nice creamy mix. If you do need to add a little bit of plaster, if it's too thin, that's okay. Mix it up real good. Make sure that you take your spatula, scrape the sides of the bowl so that you have all the plaster wetted. Now if you look at this mix, this is just a little on the thin side. So I am going to add a few more um, droplets of powder. thicken, slightly thicken the mix. And this is good. If it's too runny, it'll be too messy to pour, and your mix will also be weak. Okay, now what we're going to do is take our bowl of plaster, we're going to set it on the vibrator, make sure it's plugged in, and we are going to vibrate it for a few seconds to get the air bubbles to come up to the surface so that we get a denser mix. Now we're ready to take our impression and actually pour. I'm going to hold my impression in my non-dominant hand, <clears throat> put my plaster bowl on my right, which is my dominant side. I'm going to take a small amount of plaster and just gently vibrate it into the impression, kind of watch it go, it kind of rolls through, and you will see some air bubbles coming to the surface, and just keep applying very small amounts of plaster, 
Notice how I'm tipping up the impression towards the anterior. And now it's finally flowing around to fill the entire arch. Now once I have all of the teeth filled, then you can add larger quantities. You can flow some right over the palate. Again, vibrating it carefully. I'm going to put a larger amount here. Turn your vibrator off. I'm going to stack just a little bit more plaster right on the top of the impression and set that aside for a second. And then I'm going to take almost all of the remaining plaster and put it into the rubber former. Leave a little bit in your bowl for adding on later. Keep cleaning your spatula off on the edge of the blade. And now what we're going to do is take the former with the plaster, put it back on the vibrator, vibrate this into the former real thoroughly. And now we're going to be ready to invert. So now you're going to take your impression, you're going to invert it onto that plaster that's in the former, and you're going to just rock it back and forth slightly. Now what you need to do is make sure that your occlusal plane is horizontal or level with the tabletop. You want to keep your handle right in the center and the whole impression centered left to right, anterior to posterior. I'm going to hold the handle. I'm going to take my spatula, go around the impression and be sure to clean off some of this excess plaster. One of the things you do not want to do is you don't want to bury your impression. It will cause you some severe problems later on. Notice I'm taking a little bit, adding it in the posterior to build up the heels on the impression. This is more critical for a mandibular impression. Try and keep it as neat as you can. You still have working time as long as your plaster is shiny, of course. Hasn't reached the loss of gloss yet or the initial set. And there you have it. An impression. And now it's going to be uh, needing to set up for approximately 45 minutes before you can separate it.